Ladies and gentlemen, children of all ages, we are back with part two of our Hack Pro build. And in front of me, you can see the case is torn apart. And in other exciting news, we've also got this. This is the adapter that we're gonna need to install our motherboard into this chassis. So today's plan is to install the motherboard tray, make sure we got our measurements correct. Guys, we are gonna need every millimeter we can get in this build and then make the adapter plate for the back of the case, which is gonna go in there. Before we do that though, we're gonna show you how we got to this point by taking apart, ah, here it is, this, oh, it's so heavy, Power Mac G5. Today's video is brought to you by Honey, the free web browser extension that will find you the best promo codes on many shopping websites like Amazon, eBay, and more. Show your appreciation for them having the stones to sponsor Hackintosh content by getting Honey today at joinhoney.com slash LTT. Before we get started on our teardown, we need to make sure that all of our hardware still works after everything we've done to it, you know, removing the heat sinks and stuff, and that it boots into macOS. Again, it's like, that's why they're all there. Ah, uh, thank you. That could have been really bad. It's on. I don't see any power going to the board though. Yeah, like nothing's lighting up. It just works. I don't always take a drink of water while I wait for my computer to boot, but when I do, it's from a Linus Tech Tips water bottle. And we're in. It's a Mac Pro 6.1 running Mac OS 10.14.5, 384 gigs of RAM. And we've got 28 CPU cores. We do have one problem though, and we were kind of worried about this. So if we opened up disk utility, we can see that only one of our 950 Pro SSDs that we're using to test our quad M.2 PCI Express card here is being detected. So in order for these uh, 16X to four times 4X slot adapters to work, you need a feature called PCI Express bifurcation, which not all motherboards support. It's more common in the server space. So that's not working, which means we might need to reevaluate our storage, but we can still move forward for now. Now, don't worry guys, before you freak out, this is not a working specimen. We got this from FreeGeek. Uh, thanks FreeGeek, by the way. But even so, you're gonna wanna go slowly and be careful. You don't want to risk accidentally damaging anything that does work. Okay. And that's how we remove the CPUs. I remember tri-blade fans. These are thick too. These are 38 millimeter thick fans. Looks like whoever's, uh, whoever's Mac this was did some upgrading. So we've got some Corsair value select. We've got some hyper velocity premium Apple. That looks very premium and Apple certified right there. Got some Kingston memory, some more value select. Well, now that we've kind of gone down this path, we might as well continue with it. So there's our wireless card, Airport Extreme. We won't need this mid plate, so we can go ahead and uh, One sec. Here's our last cooling fan. So that's an 80 mil cooling fan as well as, wow, that is a shockingly beefy built-in case speaker. Oh yeah, PCI Express. Holy crap, no it isn't, I just assumed. This is an AGP graphics card, what the crap? Why would they design it like that? Everything is designed to be straightforward. Okay, so I think we're at the point now where we're ready to slide the board, but it looks like these standoffs need to come out, so we could unscrew them, or just, yeah, give it a little. Ah, ah feels like when I was having my wisdom teeth removed. Ah. Ah. For all the seasoned Mac technicians out there, like, well, well, lol. Um, actually, look, I've never taken one of these apart before, okay? And in my defense, 
they don't exactly make it intuitive. Everything is designed to be straightforward. Ah! Get it, get it, get it, go on. Go, go on, get, get. Cool, so on the back we've got all these uh, rubber spacers. Uh, this looks like the uh, CPU chipset, so that would be like your Northbridge, Southbridge, probably. I mean, I'm guessing just based on having seen a fair number of motherboards. No such corners were cut on the ECS A55F-M4 1.0. And there's our I.O. that we don't need anymore. Oh, hey, look, the specs are on here. So this was a two gigahertz DP dual processor. Get your mind out of the gutter. 512 megs, DDR 400 megahertz, 160 gig, has an SD reader. G5200, would that be the graphics card? No, G5, maybe that's like the model, G5, I'm not sure. 56K modem, PCI-X. Let's get the, dang it. Let's get this power supply out of here. Now this I wanna be careful with, because I don't know if there's any exposed nonsense in here. That is a chunky power supply, holy smokes. Five, that's a 500 watt power supply? Wow, power supplies have come a long way. You, know, you might think, oh, like older CPU tech might be like really huge or whatever. Actually, that's it. That's one of the processors from the Power Mac G5. IBM power processor right there. All right, so I could finish this off, pull the optical and the hard drive out with all the quick clips and all that kind of stuff. And then we'd actually have to cut um, some of these other components out. But why bother doing that when this unit is already prepped? Now, as you guys saw, Apple didn't use anything that I would describe as PC standard when it came to their motherboard design. So that's where, here it is, this motherboard tray comes in. So the next thing we're gonna do is show you guys how we're going to adapt that non-standard layout to our HPTX motherboard. Before we put that in though, let's talk about one of the other things that we had to deal with here. So if you guys remember, the IO, which is completely unlike PCIO, was in the back here. So that's all been chopped out, but we did manage to retain the original locking mechanism, which we are hoping to continue to use. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this back into place. Mm. Now let's throw in our motherboard tray. So one of the benefits of doing an adapted motherboard tray versus just putting new standoffs in here is that we actually needed some space behind the motherboard in order to route our cables anyway. So this has it lifted up, oh man, about a, about a centimeter and change above the bottom here. And we can use that for all the routing that we need to do. We know it's not very pretty right now, guys. There's still a lot of work to be done. This is just mostly to do a, a more thorough test fit. So there's no shortage of G5 Mac back adapter plates, but this one is gonna be a little bit different. So instead of just kind of bolting onto the back and sticking out, we want it as close to a factory finish as we can get once we finish painting. So what we've done here is we've got a cutout for our PCI slots, our dual 120 millimeter fans, which are gonna have a radiator on them, our PC, I.O. plate here, and then check this out. There's double-sided tape on these lips here. So to get this in, we've got these little slides cut in the original case here. And then you kinda fight with it a bit. Uh, yep, yeah. oh shoot, I missed, one sec. Don't worry, we're gonna be painting it, so if we get some little scratches on it and stuff, we're not gonna consider that the end of the world. Uh, ooh. There we go. Okay. So there's some spots where there's clearly still a bit more material that needs to be taken out. We've got a bit of a lip here around the, um, around the side panel locking mechanism, but there's other spots where we are pretty darn close. By the time we take this piece here Put in some perforations, just like the metal from the factory. Put in some filler here, sand it down and paint it. You would be hard pressed to notice that this is not supposed to be here. I know what we're doing right now doesn't look like much, but this is very moment of truth for this project, guys, because there's a lot of redoing of fab that will need to be done if this does not fit. 
So the motherboard tray is right up against our back adapter plate here. And uh, it looks like the screw holes are in fact going to line up, but the only way we're gonna know for sure is to put these in. We're gonna be using the shortest ones that we can possibly find because unlike the back of our motherboard tray where we're planning to do some cable routing, we do not want to waste any space between the motherboard tray and the motherboard that we don't have to. You know what the crazy thing is? Is it's not even that unreasonable looking compared to the original one. Okay, we gotta be careful with this board. I don't think Gigabyte's sending us another one now that they know what we're doing with it. Maybe I called it a success too early. These standoffs are pretty tight. Okay, I got that one. And yes, we're gonna round this off. Don't worry, you guys. So as we've done before, we just harvested uh, PCI slot holders from uh, an existing case. Now this isn't actually, it doesn't have the slot for it to come through yet, but it's gonna go in kind of like that. And then we're gonna have our, uh, our dual fan radiator here in the back, but let's go ahead and throw the cards in without that for now. Oh yeah, wow, it goes. Oh, not bad. Okay. So obviously our graphics card sagging a little bit right now, but this radiator is gonna go right here. Oh, it's looking a lot more real, ladies and gentlemen. There it is. We're going black fans, right? Yeah. Yeah, 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 okay, okay. good. All right, so we've got our power supply in. That's not actually the way it's gonna go in. It's gonna be tilted up, but right now, this CPU heat sink is in the way. It's gonna be a water block later. Then we can go ahead and put our triple radiator back in. That fits just right, doesn't it? I'm willing to bet a lot of you didn't have a ton of faith in this project when we kicked it off, but now you're hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss the best part, aren't ya? We'll see you there. Skillshare is the online learning community with thousands of classes in design, business, technology, and more. Their premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality classes on must know topics so you can improve your skills, unlock new opportunities, and do the work that you love. It's more affordable than most learning platforms out there with an annual subscription costing less than $10 a month. And you can check out all kinds of good stuff. Christopher Dodd is one of the top teachers at Skillshare. He's a self-taught web developer who inspires and educates his students. His classes go over the fundamentals of web development and he's got over 6,500 students signed up for his courses. So use the promo link in the description to get your first two months for free. Thanks for watching guys and uh, wish us luck because this isn't even the hardest part yet. <laughs>